All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to talk about the device API. So first of all, uh, I'm Matt Steele. Uh, I work on mobile web stuff at Union Pacific. I'm also Matt D. Steele on Twitter and GitHub. So one of the things that I want to talk about today is one of the facets of the great native versus HTML5 war that's been raging on forever. I'm sure nobody is sick of this talk, uh, topic at all yet. Uh, it seems like it's battled forever. I'm um, pretty sure the guy on the right here writes native iOS apps. Uh, this person builds uh, Windows Phone apps. I'm not quite sure exactly. Actually, I, these don't have anything to do with the talk. I just saw them. They were you know, pictures of the internet from like 1993, and I just thought that they were awesome. So I wanted to put them in a talk. So um, yeah, here's another one. Uh, these things are freaking awesome. Uh, anyway, so Tim Wright uh, wrote an article a couple of months ago on a list apart called Environmental Design. And his point was that your application should respond to the environment that it's running in. For instance, if you're in a really dark room, maybe you want to change the text from white on black to black on white, uh, et cetera. Or maybe you don't want to be using super hardcore uh, battery usage when you're not plugged into a, uh, to a power source. So he advocated building websites with a number of these sensor inputs, uh, but generally you need to get access to those through native APIs. So it's going to be different on iOS, on Android, on Windows Phone, et cetera. Uh, but one of the things that he said is that now, thanks to the buildup of the device API, uh, you can do a lot of this stuff in web technology. So the device API is a set of uh, features that give browsers access to sensor inputs. Generally, like I said, you have to do this via native. Uh, originally, a lot of these features started off in Mozilla's Firefox OS. They're building an entire operating system out of web technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, but a lot of these APIs are now being standardized in the W3C. So I want to talk about three of these APIs today. Uh, the first one is battery status. And it's probably easiest just to show a demo of what this looks like. So this is a web page. Uh, and if you see, when I plug in a micro USB, the background changes. Uh, and when I unplug it, it changes again. And you can also see the amount of uh, battery all the way down to the 0.0001%, uh, thanks to floating point numbers in JavaScript. <laughs> Uh, here's an example of what the code looks like. Basically, all you have to do is uh, add an event listener to this charging change. Um, and you get a new object on the navigator called battery that lets you see a binary of whether or not it's charging or not. Uh, and uh, you can hook up to those events. So every time that you unplug or plug in, or even when the power drops from 55 to 54%, you can capture all those events and hook into them. So right now, this is only supported in Firefox, although it works on desktop, Android, and their OS. Uh, the code for this has actually been in WebKit for the last year, but no implementer has switched on yet, and I'm not quite sure why, which is kind of interesting. So uh, the second feature is the ambient light sensor. Most of your phones have one of these. It dims the screen when you get into a dark room, et cetera. Here's an example of what it looks like. So uh, you can see at the bottom, there's kind of a, a number that's flashing every once in a while. And when I turn off the lights, it darkens the screen. It's party time. Did some sweet CSS animations. Uh, this might be type 2, as Cody had mentioned. <laughs> Uh, so you get an event to hook onto for here as well. It's device light. And what you get for the value from that event is uh, a measure of the light's intensity in lux, which is the SI unit for luminous intensity or something. One thing that I noticed is that uh, if you have two devices sitting right next to each other reading the same input, one might show as 100. The other one might show as like 25. So there seems to be a lot of variance between how the light sensors in different devices read. But it's still going to be good even if you're only showing relative increases or decreases. In, in it. Right now, this is only supported in Firefox, um, and I haven't seen any movement in other browsers yet. There's not even any bugs uh, in Blink or Chrome or any other ones, but I'm hoping that it comes in soon. So the third is device orientation. That's how your phone is positioned in space. Uh, and the best way to show this is probably through a demo. So this is an app that I put together called the Pizza Compass. Uh, and basically what it does is it uses the HTML5 geolocation API to get latitude and longitude, and uh, the device orientation to figure out how the device is rotated along the z-axis. And it just shows you where the closest pizza restaurant is using a compass. And so you see I'm at 0.2 kilometers so far, and I move. And if I look up, it's, uh, it's pizza time. 
Yeah. <laughs> So there's a couple events that you can hook onto for this. Device orientation is the main one. And uh, from the event, you can get three values. Alpha, which is how the phone or device is rotated along the Z axis. Uh, beta, which is tilted front to back. And gamma, which is left to right. So across the three of these, you can get um, access to exactly how the phone is working. There's also a uh, device motion event, which lets you see whether or not you know, the phone is being dropped or is being shifted left or right really high. It lets you tap into the accelerometer. So one of the cool websites for using device motion is this uh, isthisanearthquake.com. So the idea is that you open up this website, and then you just place your device on a table somewhere. And it uses the uh, alpha to see whether or not the phone is moving up and down. And if it does, it changes this canvas event to go up or down. So if you have a spare device that you don't mind uh, leaving forever, uh, and we ever get an earthquake, this will tell you if you're staring at it. <laughs> uh, device orientation actually has pretty good support, um, but there's a couple of discrepancies in its implementation, in particular among how the alpha event, whether or not you're rotating it left or right, works even between different WebKit, WebKit implementations. Um, rotating your device clockwise can increase the value in some devices, but decrease the value in others. So that Pizza Compass only works on Firefox and uh, mobile Safari. But if you try and pull it up in Chrome, it just goes crazy and starts spinning around in circles. Um, so one of the libraries that I wish existed is something that normalized um, all of the events so that you had a sane default. Uh, and I don't think that exists yet. So if there's anyone that wants to be a hero of the internet, they should go and build that. And it would be awesome. So there's a whole bunch of other APIs. Uh, there's network information, which lets you tell you what kind of bandwidth you're on. Uh, there's proximity, which lets you use the proximity sensor to see if there's something nearby. You could use that to build like a theremin, maybe. Um, you know, you, you can even access to the vibration API, so you could rumble the phone uh, if you know, X, Y, or Z is happening. Um, so these are all really cool things to check out. Uh, and that's it. So thanks a lot, guys. <laughs>